Hi everyone! Today we are going to do an easy all over pattern that you can do on either a long arm or a domestic really easily. So this is our quilt for today. This is my Astrid pattern, which was actually the very first quilt pattern I ever released. And so I remade it recently using this fun Ruby Star Society fabric and decided to do this all over quilting on it. Now, obviously I worked on a long arm, so I was working side to side. The quilt is actually hung the other way, but I did these long lines first and then went in into the filler. But if you're working on a domestic machine, you can pull out your walking foot and use the walking foot to do these long kind of gently wavy lines and then go back in and free motion quilt the filler. And that'll make uh, working on a domestic a lot easier because you'll be able to do all the wavy lines first and really stabilize your quilt for the free motion. So I used this fun metallic thread on mine just to give it a little bit of sparkle and just have a little fun. I backed the quilt in the balloon animals as well, which I thought was, it was just too cute to pass up really. So I hope you enjoy this video. This is um, one of my favorite all over designs because it is really fast. And if you haven't ever done these figure eight designs, then you will be a pro by the time you're done with this quilt. Now let's get to the quilting. Let's get started. There are two parts to this design. And the first is a simple wavy line that goes from edge of the quilt all the way across to the other side of the quilt. So let's stitch it. So it's just a gently wavy line all the way across the quilt. Now I am going to echo this line and you could echo it to the top or the bottom, whichever you are most comfortable doing. I'm going to go ahead and echo it to the top. Now it is not absolutely necessary to echo this line. I just like the look. If you'd rather just do a single line, then totally feel free. Now we are going to go ahead and do the filler between these two wavy lines. If you are working on a domestic machine, it might be a good idea to use your walking foot to do all of the wavy lines for the entire quilt and then come back and do the free motion between. Now using your walking foot to do all the wavy lines will secure all the layers of your quilt together and make it a little bit easier to free motion quilt. And it'll also allow you to do what is the most difficult part in doing domestic machine free motion quilting is doing those long lines. So if you can use your walking foot and save yourself a little bit of trouble, definitely go ahead and do it. So the second part of this design is the filler and it is a figure eight. So we are going to start at the bottom stitch all the way up, turn around before we get to this wavy line, and then start to turn back. And that's all there is to this design. I'm going to get started and then show you a few tips. So that's the design. We are stitching up, turning around just before we reach that wavy line. We're turning back and doing the same thing at the top of the bottom. Now to make these figure eights look really great, there are a couple of tips. You want to keep these lines that are connecting your figure eights vaguely parallel to each other. So there's gonna be a set that's parallel this way and a set that's parallel this way. And that will help keep your figure eight tips about the same distance apart all the way down. Now I can see my tips up here in this previously quilted area, so I have kind of a good sense of about how far apart I want to keep these for consistency. So using that as a reference is a good idea. If you would like something a little more concrete for your first row, you can grab a water air soluble marker and just make a few marks on your fabric to kind of give you something to aim at and it will just help you develop that consistency. Now, if you are gonna use marks, make sure your marks on the bottom are offset from these top marks. They're not gonna be directly over each other. They're gonna be offset. So you want to draw a mark down here, kind of 
between where these two marks are. This would be a great place to swap out if you're doing a domestic, if you used a walking foot for these um, long lines, this is a great place to use your free motion because each piece kind of neatly fits between your hands. So if you're moving the fabric around like this, this is a pretty manageable thing to do. Now I'm doing this very large scale on this quilt. If you're working on a domestic, it might be a little bit easier to keep these lines a little bit closer together. Maybe instead of the six to eight inches, I'm working on maybe four to six inches. I'm gonna continue quilting and then we'll take a look at the whole row and how to begin the next one. Now, before I move on, I do want to just mention that the best place to stop this design is right where these loops kind of meet. It's a natural point where there's a little bit of thread buildup, and so it'll disguise your stops and starts a little bit. And this is really important in domestic machine quilting because you're going to have to move your hands a lot for something like a figure eight where you're kind of um, stair stepping all the way down the quilt. And so don't stitch kind of beyond where your hands can manage. Keep it nice and tight and make use of good stop points to uh, adjust your hands. So there is our row, our complete row of this quilting design. We stitched these wavy lines back and forth and then filled it with this figure eight. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the quilt and show you it all finished. Okay guys, I am to the last row of this design. And you can see I'm, this is the batting of the quilt and this is the bottom edge. And so to make this design look a little bit more seamless, I am not going to be quilting down and kind of returning along this straight line of my quilt. Instead, I'm gonna imagine that there's another wavy line that extends off the edge of my quilt. Now, if it would help you to just take a marker and draw one, you can totally do that. If you take a look at this previous row, if you were to kind of draw a straight line across it, you would see that some of the turnarounds show, some are kind of half below that line, some completely show. So I'm going to try to mimic that look along this bottom edge to make a more consistent all over pattern. So I'm going to do a little bit and then I'll show you and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. So here's the bottom that I just stitched, and you can see that my loops, I, I just kind of fudged them to get them off the edge of the quilt, but I'm trying to create the impression that there's a curvy line that extends off the edge of the quilt, so that if these were completely stitched loops, they would come down to meet a line around here, and then they'd come back up. And that just helps make this whole design look more continuous across the surface of the quilt. Like, I mean, you certainly could dead end all of these loops up against this let, up against this edge, and it would look fine, but this is just an option to make it look like it goes off the edge or goes under the binding or however you want to think of it. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that uh, little demonstration of this all over design. If you have any questions or if there's another all over design you'd like to see, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I will do my best to do a video for you guys. Have a great day, happy quilting, and I will see you guys next time.